Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? And welcome back to the channel. Uh, first, I want to apologize. There was no tool video last night. Just ran into some things I needed to get done. So I was not able to get out here and do a tool video. Tonight, I just kind of wanted to go over. Um, I know verses sound like a broken record. There may be some people who watch uh, this video that wants the diagnosis of a BP. I have done this before. A lot of you guys have been with the channel. You have saw it, but I had it broken up to like three videos, if I remember correctly. So tonight, I wanted to go through it, do it all in one video. That, like I said, that way, if somebody is just looking to diagnose their VP44, uh, it's all in one video here. You know, as as the heading says, or as the title says, and they can go through and, and do it themselves with me helping them, or just uh, going to blue chip. What I mean by going to blue chip, and once again, I will link this in the description this is a diagnosis test run test from bluechipdiesel.com uh, and i'll put a link in the description this there's about seven pages here or so to help you diagnose uh and and run through how to test your bp so if i don't help you go on their website and like i said i'll put a link in the description for um this paper here for this printout if you want to take it or have it on your phone while you're doing it uh, that way you guys can have that also um, so right now tonight that's all I wanted to do is put this all on one video and that way it's just easier to follow along versus having about three different videos on diagnosing your VP on your second gen truck um, if it is your first time joining us if you don't mind hit that subscribe button your lower right hand corner become part of the family and also hit that bell notification that way you are notified anytime I upload a video um, starting off one of the very first things you want to do is make sure your lift pump underneath the hood is running or your lift pump if you have a fast an air dog um, any of the other companies out there that's making them I think fleece makes when it goes in a tank then they have some some separate filters whoever whatever you have make sure and ensure that your lift pump is pumping fuel um, I do have a fast on this truck um, the dually has a, a, an air dog but the uh, the second gen it has a fast on on it so one of the things like I said you're gonna to want to do and most of them um, when you turn it on they'll run for about five seconds and then after that they'll shut off but if you take and bump your accelerator they'll run for 20 seconds now one of the things that you're gonna to want to verify just I'll go through there and do it just like I said so right here's my fuel pressure you can see I'm not even five seconds, about two seconds. But if you bump your your key on, that's going to run for 20 seconds after you bump that. And you can see I am reading fuel pressure. I have 15 pounds of pressure. So we know that there is at least 15 pounds of pressure from the pump up to the uh, T where it gets its signal from. One of the things that you're gonna wanna do, uh, sometimes these will count air, depending upon what gauge you have. I've ran across gauges at home that pump, or at work, that will pump air. It sounds funny, I know that, but um, the, it, it, it will happen. So, like mine is very close, like six inches away from the VP down there. I don't even know if we can get in there and see it. Uh, right there is the uh is my t where it gets my fuel pressure from so but there's like six or seven inches of line going up to the vp where it goes into the banjo fitting right there so what you're going to want to do is after you do that if you want to have a helper that's fine make sure and crack that and know that you have fuel coming up to that because you ha could have an airlock possibly or an air bubble it going into the vp and that could be causing your no start on your truck um the, what this all stems from is about a month and a half ago i had some issues and i had about five or six codes on my truck and, one, and two of them was the the non communication with the ecm uh to the vp so that's what uh, we're going to be going through tonight and, and checking all of that stuff. All right, after you have verified that you do have fuel going to your VP, go ahead and crack your injectors one, three, and four. Um, if you did have an airlock or something like that within your line someplace or you had some air within your line, 
and you can bleed it off uh, one, three, and four, and your truck starts, then you know you just had some air in your line, things are good to go. Maybe you just changed your filters on your fast, and you didn't get all the air bled out of there, or something like that, and it traveled up here, and it made it past your your uh, your sending unit, and you know hopefully that's the problem. If not, uh, then you need to go on and continue testing, and, and the next thing you're gonna wanna do is pull the plug off the back of your VP and uh, and check some of the connections on there. You're gonna be checking pin seven for power on key on. You're gonna be checking pin six for ground. Uh, pin seven, you're gonna have key on and at the start position on your ignition. You're gonna want 12 volts uh, at both times on pin seven. And then you're gonna want just a ground on pin six all the time. And then at pin five, you're gonna pin five is a blue with a light blue with a red trace. Uh, while the plug is plugged in on pin five, you do not want any voltage at all while you're at the run position or while you're at the uh, just key on position. Uh, what pin five is, and that's your that's your solenoid shut off. That's your shut off for your VP and stop fuel. So the only time you want uh, voltage at pin five or that light blue wire with the red trace is uh, about five sec, five, three to five seconds after you turn your ignition off to kill uh, the fuel going to the VP. I guess really I got ahead of myself. One of the first things you're going to, I mean, after, after you check your fuel, the next thing you're going to do is check your relay that is in your fuse panel underneath the hood. Um, this is your VP relay here, and this is your horn relay. Both of these are the same. So. If you're out on the road and you have the issue with the truck, swap these two out and hopefully maybe the truck will start by just changing these two around. Another one of the things that you're going to want to do if you check and you have the uh, the codes is these plugs right down in here. Make sure those ha are clean. Um, if you need to, take a little screwdriver, pry them in and make sure they're good in good connection with the relay and also check the blades on the relay make sure they're clean also you're going to want them to be nice and clean and shiny like that so after you do that uh the next thing that you probably should do is go through and check all of your grounds uh there's several grounds on this truck going from battery to chassis and then also from chassis to ground engine to chassis um, there's a bunch of different grounds so go through and check all of those there's one right here and actually if you have a power probe like I do you can check power you can check these with your power probe as you can see right there I have a green light so that means that ground is good um, if you touch it up there that if you touch it you know there it's going into the body obviously you're gonna have a good ground there but you de if, definitely gonna have ground if you hit it there you see I have a light can check it back here as it's going into the battery make sure there's continuity and a good ground all the way through so you're going to want to go through and check all those there's this one here going to the battery there's two down in here um, and actually i had forgotten about these two grounds down in here there's one right there and there's one right there i had forgotten about these two grounds down in here and one of you guys actually reminded me of these two grounds so you're going to want to check all of these and that's what's nice about the power probe it does have a light on the end of it as you can see you can barely see down in there so you just take your power probe with the point on it hit that I do have good ground there and then also check that one and I've got a good ground there uh, the one main one that you're gonna be, gonna be one want to be man if I can talk be concerned with is these two grounds here one of these grounds goes to your pcm and the other ground goes down and around and goes over to your ecm uh, these are the two main grounds that you're going to want to be concerned about and if these aren't grounded that's where you possibly could get a bunch of codes out of your truck so go through there check your i mean if you need to to be certain that everything is good uh take those off clean them good and then reinstall them um also if you need to Cut the, cut the eyelets off. Put new eyelets on it. That way you are positive that everything is good and grounded. Uh, cut it back to clean wire if you have to. Because most of the time that wire is exposed. And, and that's why I said to make sure and go back. Not, not just touch the post. Because obviously you're going to have ground there. 
go back a ways and, and te test and make sure you have ground back off the, this the post or the stem that you're touching. So after you've determined that all of your grounds are good, you went around and checked them. Um, and I do have, you guys don't have this power probe, I do have a link in my description uh, for these. Uh, they start right around 70 bucks and go up from there. This is the Power Probe 3. Uh, they do have a four out now that has a much nicer display on it. All right, so if you go through all of that and the truck still won't start, then you need to go ahead, unplug your plug, or first, if you want to, it, it's good, it's, well, you're gonna need somebody to help you do this by, you know, turning the key on and off. I don't have anybody to help me tonight, so we're just gonna kind of run through the scenario of um, unplugging the back of the uh, VP plug and, and going from there. So you're gonna have pin five um, before you unplug it let's check the voltage on that first pin five if you strip back your coating is a blue wire with a red trace and all this goes through the blue chip also so it's a blue wire with a red trace so just take and, and puncture or whatever use your power probe and check or if you got a voltmeter or something like that a test light in this case will not work unless you have one of the i think snap on possibly makes a test light if i can find some links in the description or if i can find some links i'll put them in the description i think snap on actually makes a test light that you can check ground with if i'm not mistaken but i'm not 100 percent positive the best thing to have is like i said i use this power probe all the time um, i hate doing electrical work but this makes it a lot easier for me uh, to be able to find ground and find, you know, if there, it's supposed to be 12 volt positive there, it'll display, it'll show and read 12 volt positive. Um, you can see right there how it's reading the red plus and it is reading 12 volts. So that's why, I, and then if it's ground, you can read ground over here. Um, one of the things that you're gonna wanna do with your power probe, you're gonna wanna have it connected to a good engine ground. Um, so, and when I did mine, I ground it to the grid heater um, because it's a good engine ground. So make sure and check your, like I said, pin five, which is if you strip back your coating, you're gonna see it. It's the blue wire with the red trace. And make sure there's no voltage there when the key is in the on or the run position. That's why I said that it's you're gonna to have to have somebody help you. So when your key is just on the run position, that's fine, you can do that yourself. Um, there should be no voltage detected at that pin five. It's the, again the blue wire with the red trace um, in the run position or in the start position. There should be no power to that at all. Now, if you want to check and make sure that's running right, <clears throat> then uh, turn your key, turn everything off. You should have power there momentarily to kill the VP, like I said earlier. All right, one of the things that I did to help me out, and that's one of the things that Blue Chip doesn't have when you're getting ready to unplug your VP. Um, they don't have a plug diagram in there. And what this is here, this is the, I, I always, I printed this off and it helped me. Um, and then there's some other ones on there online that tells you and is labeled which ones they are. Um, I did this one just to show you guys, or I printed this one off, um, just to show you guys what, move that out of the way. Just to show you guys what it is look what it will look like um blue chip tells you when you take and unplug it to hold it in your hand so it looks like a smiley face just like that uh with the six pins below now this will be it plugged into the truck um just like that that's how it goes in the truck so um this bottom pin right here is pin seven, and this top pin is pin six. This is the one that you're gonna want 12 volt supply at key on and start. So there's another reason why you need a helper. You need to have a 12 volt supply with the power probe um, when the key is in the run position and also when somebody turns the key for you to the start position, have 12 volt there and then you should always have a ground on the top pin which is pin six um, if you do have or have that then odds are it is a dead VP um, if you're still not certain and you want to be a hundred percent you can hot wire your VP 44 again I talked about this in them other three videos um, what you're going to want to do is get you a couple of leads make sure they're protected 
Um, you can use some round if you have some, whatever you have. Um, they talk about in the blue chip guide that uh, to use a spade connector, cut the one side off. Um, I did try that for me. I could not get it to work and stay on there properly. Um, I had some round connectors. I used those. Uh, it never got to the point where I did not, where I did have to try and hot wire my VP. Um, for some reason, I think mine was a grounding issue because I did do some cleaning and I did uh, go ahead and for just for shits and giggles per se, I cracked that line at my VP and <clears throat> I, I got my truck to start um, whether it was cleaning the the grounds or whether it was uh, Cracking that line and I did have just a little bit of air in the line. I have no idea. But anyway going on um, You can hot wire your VP now if your truck does start and what you're gonna want to do sorry um, On your positive you have you're gonna want to go from pin 7 to the positive terminal on your battery Put a 10 amp fuse in there just in case and I would suggest it highly suggest it to Protect those ends uh, put some shrink tube on them or something like that once you get those made um, I do have some leads made up uh, Let's see where are they at? This is what I made up right here. Um, you can see I have a couple of round connectors, uh, ground or positive and ground, and then I put did put a 10 amp fuse, and then just have some alligator clips on each end. Um, red going to a 12 volt supply, and you know obviously a ground to pin six. So when you do that, if your truck starts on those, then that means there's a communication issue. You either have a bad ECM or you have bad continuity going from your signal wires to your ECM. So you're gonna wanna get your ECM tested or check continuity going from your VP to your ECM and see if you have a bad wiring harness, a break in the line or something like that. So like I said, this was just a video tonight to put everything in one video uh, for the people who just want to basically go on YouTube and search how to diagnose a VP um, and, and help you guys out so uh, anyway if you don't mind uh, that's pretty much all I have I can't think of anything else that you're gonna want to do um, like I said links are in the description for the power probe uh, I'll try and find one of those test lights that I was talking about. I think I think Snap-on maybe had a test light that you could test ground with also. It would read green or red, uh, just like the Prower Probe. If I can find that, I'll put a link in the description for that also. And then also there's a link in the description for the, uh, the blue chip testing guide. So the only thing that you will not get in that blue chip is one of these papers. So you're gonna wanna print one of these off. Now I will tell you, there is a bunch of plugs on there that people have put on there they have labeled wrong they have pin six and seven flip-flopped they have it on the pin seven on top right there and pin six on the bottom as this plugs into the truck your pin seven is right here and that is the positive pin so uh just a little fyi for you this should have a 12 volt power supply to this one and a ground to this one just so you know anyway guys i think that's pretty much all i have um if you don't mind hit that like button give me a thumbs up subscribe if you have not already done so and we'll talk to you guys later on